गुड मॉर्निंग लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन एंड वेलकम बैक टू द इंडिया फूड न्यूट्रिशन समिट 2021 दैट वाज अ वंडरफुल की नोट प्रेजेंटेशन बाय श्री मनीष शाह फ्रॉम एनडीडीपी ऑन अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑन हाउ कोविड-19 पेंडेमिक चेंज द फूड इंडस्ट्री नाउ वी स्टार्ट आवर डे विद अ फर्स्ट पैनल सेशन ऑन अ टॉपिक न्यूट्रासूटिकल्स द न्यू जनरेशन ऑफ फूड थेरेपेटिक्स सम ऑफ द की पॉइंटर्स दैट वुड बी डिस्कस्ड इन दिस पैनल सेशन विल बी ऑन nutraceuticals the front line of battle for consumer health innovation in food technologies to maintain quality and preserve the nutritional quotient making food products inexpensive and safe to tackle important unmet health needs and many more and to discuss on this panel session i would like to introduce in the order of sequence dr bhavna sharma india head nutrition science division from itc limited joining dr sharma we have mr deshraj sharma head quality india from ferrero india next we have mr vijay uttarwar ceo from natural india private limited joining mr uttarwar we have mr vivek sharma hd from qa and rnd wickfield next we have mr shilpa wadwa head nutrition health and wellness from nestle india now i would like to introduce dr vaibhav kulkarni global chair ilsi board assembly and honorable secretary and board member for hadsa dr kulkarni since you being the panel moderator i request you to take the session ahead uh thanks devanshi for uh, this uh, very crisp uh, introduction uh, and that's what is the need of the hour that we jump in directly into the entire uh, subject that we are uh, going to discuss in this in this panel uh to start with uh, uh you know the heading of this entire panel is let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food you know this famous saying by greek physician hippocrates although food based medicine has recently been at the forefront of the wellness trend the concept of using food as medicine has been around for thousands of years in today's lingo whole food or supplement that have specific health or medical benefits are called nutraceuticals and they are making a statement on the health industry in a major way as of 2016 i don't know the sensex goes on but as of 2016 over 170 million adults reportedly took dietary supplements to regulate or maintain their health so you know it's growing i'm talking about this data of 3 or 4 years back but it might have gone um, it, it's growing this market is actually growing the categories are growing while it may be difficult to pronounce it's not difficult to see how the benefit of nutraceuticals are appealing to the people throughout the world so uh, on this keynote i would start my uh, first question with my esteemed panel members uh, so there are some questions which i have uh, written it for my panel members. so the first question goes on the on this particular panel goes to uh, vivek sharma so uh, yeah. vivek uh, uh, yeah. again welcome to this panel uh thank, thank you, you. I, i mean to start with i really want to know from you what is the ro- what a role see you hear this nutraceutical world for last you know till the time and i i realized in india in 2016 when the regulation came from that day till today yeah this we 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 coin this word often uh, yeah it is it, 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 it is taken in the same uh, just by uh, pharma companies and at the same time it is it is taken in the same just by the food company so i would yeah. really want to know what role nutraceutical can play between food and pharma yeah well thank you very much babo i just want to give the brief to the team so i started my career in 2002 with the bukhar limited i started and joined there as a research associate i was involved with the development of the baby food designing and development of the critical care patient food supplement food supplement not in the form of tablets capsule but in the food actually for the oncology patient i have designed some formulation 
so after that i joined the mv so mv was there in year 1998 and they started with their business with the dietary supplement health supplement i guess they were the first one to introduce in india health supplement after the followed by the herbalife <clears throat> at that time i just want to understand because from the food i joined the dietary supplement that is not a pure pharmaceutical company but want to understand what is exactly the dietary supplement then i studied and understood because 25 product i commercialized in mv they we had just transferred technology from us to india so at that time i realized there is nothing new whatever we are adding to the dietary health supplement so this was a always a confusion what is food what is a nutraceutical and what are the pharmaceuticals after doing the detailed study in mv itself then only you realize what is the difference between food and pharmaceutical and nutraceutical so i just give you it is just between food and pharmaceutical so i just want to clarify what is food food what we eat just like plant source what we eat and basically what is required for our normal health and normal growth of our body that is a required protein fat carbohydrate vitamin and minerals which we everyone get in their daily life daily diet then it comes to the nutraceutical what are the nutraceuticals nutraceuticals may be further divided into three different category first is the functional food first is the nutraceuticals a health supplement there the further medicine nutrition i would say very borderline between pharmaceutical and the nutraceutical so i will cut, uh, define those differences also what we are saying is the functional food i give you an example people eat uh, oranges why we eat oranges because we get the vitamin c we know it which is required to fight against uh, some scurvy that is a one of the disease and also build up your immunity now that you also see a lot of people are prescribing the what is to chew vitamin c tablets now this in the pandemic just to improve your improve your immunity system so which can fight which may help to prevent from the corona virus disease this is also in the medicine and the nutraceutical supplement also so basically the nutraceutical or the food which provide a role beyond the normal food so mvr is also having the bio c tablet and because if you see in the food the recommended dietary intake of the vitamin c is 40 to 70 mg per day to survive for a normal food for the survival and the normal growth which is required by the our body if you took uh, if you take from the nutraceutical nutraceutical are <clears throat> those active component which we have been extracted from the function food only maybe we can't take the orange five oranges daily so we have extracted the particular vitamin c from the oranges and concentrated made into the concentrated for compressed in the form of tablet and ask people rather taking five oranges daily we have given them into the form of tablet which you can take any time on the go so this is also convenient also and this is a very easy for people to consume also and the you get the desired level of the that particular nutrient i will uh, give you another example further from the uh, functional food to the nutraceuticals when we move to the core nutraceutical there are certain ingredient which uh, you cannot have on a daily basis for example and we was having that uh, garlic heart care caps tablets which has an active component of allicin which is required for anti clotting blood clotting function if you if i ask you to have five garlic in a day i don't think so anyone can have it only for one day two day three days not more than that so what we uh, is that is supplement people herbal life or amve they did it they have extracted that active component from the garlic and introduced into the form of capsules a tablet so it is a very convenient also for anyone they can have it at any time so if i ask you this is also derived from the food only but that has been made into the concentrated form and made into the easy and a very convenient way for the people to consume it so this is another example which make us say this is a core nutraceutical which has a function beyond the 
normal growth of our body. You should take the vitamin C on a regular basis. Uh, so definitely, in, especially in the season of winter. So you will get rarely get a chance to develop cold or cough. If you start, already started taking, so this will help as a curative action, preventive action, not the curative, but the preventive action in your body. If people are suffering from the coronary disease, they normally start taking as a preventive maintenance, which can help to uh, provide some additional benefits to the, our body, which can fight against any disease. If you move to the poor nutraceuticals, poor nutraceuticals, when I say these are the special uh, baby foods, or uh, this may be specialized nutrition food, for example, and Nestle is having the uh, baby food. They have also into the premature baby food. That is a non one. Why we non one is designed? I guess Silpa Vadova we can add on further. So a low birth weight, which has got the premature delivery of the baby, which has less weight, less than 2.5 kg, they call it premature baby delivery. But the normal functions are required. So premature baby delivery they need much more nutrition than the baby who are delivered normally because their protein fat requirement is much more higher so there are none one which has been designed especially to cater their requirement which is more in protein which is more in vitamin minerals so these are the differences i just want to clear the web of. and uh, okay. if i say the uh, following yeah yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Vivek. I think uh, for providing uh, uh, a little bit of a clarity. I know it's a very vast question and a vast subject. Yeah. People are still trying to because nutraceutical has always been kind of a, uh, uh, a very. Uh, it is a borderline between uh, borderline. everyone says between the food and, or medical food and uh, actual drug. Thank you uh, for providing a little bit of clarity, at least in this uh, in this uh, in this question. Uh, yeah. We'll try to move on with uh, with this. Uh, so uh, now, as we know, uh, friends, that you know, you have, there's a there's a clear cut difference. Not very clear, but we still call yeah. it as a clear cut difference between food and pharma. So let us get some uh, some some more inputs on 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 other aspects of uh, of, of nutraceutical. So the next question I will try to uh, put it across uh, to Bhavna. So Bhavna, what is the difference uh, uh, as explained by science and as understood by consumer, as you said, when it comes to a particular benefit? Say, say nowadays in COVID times, it's it's a, the 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 in thing is immunity. Everybody is running behind immunity. So, the particular benefit, say, immunity in these days between food, food supplement, nutra, and drug. So, how, how can uh, there's we can clearly differentiate by science or by consumer? So, I want really to you to throw some light on this one. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Vedna. Um, so, I think. Um, what you just asked is actually a very interesting and a very important question today. Because if you see today, I think there are two things which are very clear. There is no dearth of information. In fact, there is so much information that it is difficult to even figure out what is right, what is wrong. In fact, it is probably not even correct to say what is right, what is wrong, because everything has a bit of a, you know, mixed up today because science is emerging. And I think the pandemic has completely accelerated this whole knowledge generation. A lot of it is good. But a lot of way it is understood by the consumer, simple people, you know, who may not have any background, even people like you and me, we have background, but I don't think we can claim to completely understand this, you know, complex matrix today, right? So it is a very difficult time to make things black and white today. I think I would try my best to put some things into this picture. And I would ask my colleagues to also, you know, add on to it. I think there are three verticals, if I really have to put it, there's food, there's whole neutral world, and then there's a drug world, right? Now, what consumers, if I look at it from the lens from that, what they definitely understand, because I don't think we need, we should completely underestimate their knowledge and understanding perspectives, right? What they do know is food is every day. Rose khana hai, we have to have it three times a day or five times a day. They understand the concepts from, you know, we, we, we all eating food. They understand the difference between something which is good for them, something which is not good for them in their own understandings of it. They also know that it is for taste first then convenience has also come into being. And you also know that motor motor, they should have healthy food. 
and they all define it in their own different ways right they don't cut it off by saying carbs is should be this much percent or protein should be this much percent they go by the way that their thali looks and they inherently understand what is good for them what is not so that's just where the food plays however given the pandemic situation today the food itself has emerged to be a medicine as we also saw last year more strongly as compared to this year was the coming up of ayurveda as a sub segment of it now ayurveda has been part of our life you know just like the other asian medicines which have been part of the other cultures part so today if you see we have the whole lots of peppers and curcumin which are already part of our food system they may not be consumed exactly for the benefit of immunity from a technical perspective but people know this is good for them and they try to include more of it especially when we saw it last year as compared to this year right because they know that okay i'm not at the stage where i need a drug but i need to maintain my innate immunities so i need to focus on something which are better for me and established through generations of consumption this is their understanding of food and this is how they probably struggle with it every day there are two aspects which are added to it one is the science part of it we really don't go about and you know do clinical trials on what is the benefit if you move the protein percent intake from 20% to 10% there are sub segments to it so scientifically it is pretty much there i think from a regulation perspect we also have very clear guidelines and documents you know which tell us about rdas and you know how much we need to have about everything and we have food portions and portions so i think that way it is there the only thing that happens in that case is because it's there and it's every day it is cumbersome for people to keep a track of it every day so one day you will have orange the other day you will not have then you will get confused am i okay with vitamin c content or not then maybe two days after that you will have two oranges so it is difficult to track you know intakes and health measures like this when it comes from food so that's the segment for food when we come to nutraceutical and i include all versions of it from supplements to you know all those kinds today we know that this market which was around 3 billion dollar and probably more is going to go double the accelerated rate of at least 6 billion dollars it's growing at a cagr of almost 20 21% and it's probably going to change a huge because of the pandemic right this has opened another domain altogether now people have understood that this is not something you have every day maybe you have it some days the world of nutraceutical from a consumer lens is divided into believers and non believers more than anything else there is a whole world of people who believe into supplementation and that gets divided into i need to have my you know multivitamin daily or i need to have this at least once a week my omega 3 they are into believers and non believers they are the people when a lot of science is pushed to them they can move from one segment to the other that okay i don't believe in it but now i do because i know my food is not sufficient or they can come back to say see i've been eating it for one year nothing has happened why should i waste so much money and i can stop eating it so there is a very huge flux which is there and they are fence sitters as we call them right the regulations of course like you rightly said from 2015 to 16 there's a lot of attempt which has been done in a very very right way in a right intended way to get clarity and when we say clarity i think weber we all know it is not only about the efficacy part of it it is even about the quality of the ingredients and the raw material which is in fact is the biggest issue for this industry rather than the efficacy part of it right so i think we are all trying together to get this in place because we know it's an important vector and it's an important segment which needs to have a lot of clarity and also at the same time put the right information to avoid misinformation and misuse at the same time right so it needs to be done credibly i think that's what consumers understand drugs of course is a very very special thing and it's completely owned by the doctor space it's rightly done so it is only to be had you know when you are sick and you know given the situation it is a very small short acute usage and not i'm not going to chronic life stage threatening diseases and things like that the regulations and the medical practices are completely different i think this is what the consumer normally understands and tries to do a mix and match they are always looking for partners whether it's an industry whether it's a medical body whether it's a dietetics association they are always looking for credible information even if they don't understand it and i'll give a very simple example even in immunity when you talk about things like you know people still don't understand the difference between fiber prebiotic fiber probiotic fiber and anything like that but they have understood fiber is important thoda bahut probiotic they understand and i need to have it so this is where they stop however what they don't understand and i think that's exactly where the role of people like us comes in when we start talking about these things in terms of nutrients like zinc now tomorrow if you go and ask people about zinc or vitamin c versus oranges or zinc versus poultry and beans they don't know and it's not their fault because they haven't been told like that right now we know that zinc is very important as a immunonutrient which is you know responsible for you know 
protecting us from being susceptible to infections today we know there is an rda like that but normal people don't know they don't talk in terms of zinc so that is where both the challenge and the opportunity for an industry like nutraceutical comes where we know it is important it is backed by science it needs to be given to the people because it's impossible sometimes to get your daily recommended allowances from the food sources and you have not yet reached the stage of the drug this is where the whole nutraceutical world comes into being with responsible communication high quality and safe products being available and the right usage how much to have how long to have and when to stop right when this becomes clear as a point i think that's where the consumers require the most help today because this is something they don't understand because they talk about food they understand food they don't understand iron and zinc too much although awareness is going up but i think as a industry today we have the responsibility to use and clarify the doubts in this space so i think this is where the whole universe comes into being and uh, we do have an opportunity to play there in a responsible manner so that's my thoughts okay okay thanks bauna for uh, describing uh, the consumer point of view thinking as well as uh, from a researcher from, from science point of view as well uh, when it comes to uh, the ben uh, communicating the benefits now moving on uh, okay now we know the science is there we know the nutraceutical needs to be made they are important but we live in india and india is very cost cautious uh, nation so yeah okay consumer understands benefit consumer understands everything but at the same time consumer is always looking out for or doing a balancing act they want the benefit also plus they are cost cautious also so the next question is on the cost cautiousness and that is to vijay who is the ceo of uh, of of, uh, of neutral um, so i would like to know i would like to pick up a brains from uh, vijay on what can be done we know nutraceutical products are important we know they they are very important from a health perspective what can be done to make these nutraceutical products affordable and safe as well okay thanks for that i think there are uh, two questions one is what can be done to make it affordable and what can be done to make it safe these are two different ones and uh, i'll take it as a two questions affordable is uh, you know a kind of supply and dem demand and supply equation so if there is a large demand then there is a lot you know manufacturing happens and you get the economies of scale and the price goes down but if the demand is much lower then there is obviously uh, less production and the cost is higher so primarily awareness will be an important thing for understanding that these are the things that we need as an extra whether you call it a supplement you call it a nutraceutical because the food gives you certain uh, you know uh, uh, micro and micro nutrition and we are aware like bhavna and uh, they have already told the difference between the food and uh, the medicine so when something goes wrong we take medicine but for day to day maintenance we take food but when the food is not giving enough nutrition that's where the role of supplement or the nutraceutical comes in right and when you become more aware of it so it's the both as a industry and the consumer forums is to remain healthy you need certain nutrition in a balanced way if you do not get it through your food then you need the supplements and when that awareness increases your demand is going to increase and obviously then the the prices will be you know uh, more reasonable from the safety standpoint you know uh, this is a regulatory aspect you know and uh, the indian regulation fssi nutraceutical part of it now uh, it is quite comprehensive so it's the strict implementation uh, you know uh, for the industry uh, will also make 
the consumers feel it safe so more communication both from the government the regulatory body as well as the consumer forums and the industry will make it consumer to feel it more safe really because if these products are safe it has enough uh, requirement to make sure that you cannot put out anything in the market right it has to go through uh, the certain norms that are already set by the fssi industry so the products are safe it is the communication and the awareness will make it uh, you know consumers to feel it is safe uh, that will be my take on it uh, okay thanks uh, thanks vijay uh, uh, for uh, for getting us uh, know a little bit on the commercial part of the uh, of the nutraceutical side now let's go to on the technological part uh, so uh, i'll i'll uh, i'll move on to deshraj so so uh, deshraj what are the technological barriers in production for this uh, uh, we call it as a highly scientific nutraceutical products uh, dr webber uh, first of all thank you uh, uh, for the opportunity but uh, with my experience i will tell you uh, uh, like you know the uh, discussion is going very interesting uh, previous uh, speakers has said about uh, you know differentiation between uh, food nutraceuticals and pharma uh, but before uh, i address to your question i'll go back to the food part of it because you know uh, the topic of discussion is food uh, let food to be if a new, uh, medicine and medicine be a food so i i would say like you know the every food is having a nutritional element and the whole discussion is all about that uh, and how to extract and uh, because palatability of when we get take that uh, you know uh, the nutritional component regularly one of my uh, co panelists said like you know that if uh, we know that uh, some ingredient is giving a uh, very beneficial medish uh, effect to to certain uh, problem or uh, to the or benefit to the health then it is very difficult for every day to take uh, you know uh, the kind of uh, food we want so that's why that uh, extracted form is very very much important here and this this is to have the palatability uh, improved with the improved nutrition form and that's what the role of uh, nutri nutraceuticals comes so uh, specific to the, your question uh, when we extract extract the particular ingredient which is useful then it will there there are some some of the uh, on technology plays a role here to extract it from that food part or from uh, its origin and uh, when it is been extracted it there are there are other elements also come along with it uh, like the heavy metals and they are also coming into a concentrated form so this is an, a, a, a biggest challenges for uh, the nutritional industry and also the raw material is also a big challenge because you know uh, the more raw material uh, if you talk about in, in india and agriculture part you know the pesticides used and other things so i think this uh, to solve this uh, industry uh, we need to have a good uh, strong pipeline of raw material with uh, uh, with the organic farming or a controlled farming where we have a high quality of uh, raw material available natural raw ingredients available which can uh, you know give uh, the uh, relief to us uh, by ensuring like the you know safety is already uh, in build in that so i think this is this is one one of the success and the third point which is uh, i'm not going uh, in details on particular technology but i'll give you you know brief uh the focus where the focus is shifting in food industry as well as uh nutraceutical industry is uh to have low heat processing uh, where uh, because you know you can extract but by extracting you will lose lot of nutritional part of it vitamin and minerals you know uh, vitamins will uh, definitely will go off so you need a uh, high pressure low temperature processing uh, these are coming into field and uh, when okay 
when you take it uh, into a, uh, you know uh, uh, in a finished product then you have to ensure like microbiological issues are not there so that that pulse electric field is something which is you know the high electric field is uh, passing the liquid to the high electric field so you are not uh, giving any uh, high temperature also you are not giving the treatment to kill the uh, micro microorganism and pathogen in that uh target uh, target uh, food ingredient so these are the challenges and uh, industry is evolving and uh, i think is a long way to go and uh, but i think it's uh, finally i want to say like you know food and nutrient nutraceuticals are complementing to each other right we can we have to believe in both and i think it is uh, it is a win win situation for both actually because this is the only way to have a sustainable nutrition and without food you cannot imagine of the nutri uh, sustainable nutrition so this is uh, my view my personal view here dr verbal hi verbal your voice is not there hi verbal Oh, sorry, I was on yeah. mute because uh, no, no. Uh, so, 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 Deshraj, I think uh, the the next question actually half the part you have answered to me on uh, uh, on on how uh, the nutritive value of the food gets depleted uh, during the process and how the new innovations are uh, have been bought, uh, you know, to 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 safeguard that nutritive value. Uh, so, anything else that you want to add on the innovation front? Uh, pertaining to maintain the quality and the nutritive value. Anything else you want to add on it? See, uh, 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 innovations are on these two fields only, where you know how you can maximize the nutrition, uh, how much you can e efficiently extract that uh, nutritional component from uh, from the road. So, so innovations directionally are in that direction, and technologically, I have told you already, but. Uh, another thing which is on safety part which is you know uh, like the food industry also uh, like the ex use of x-ray and because the diversity of the raw material is there and controls are less on the raw material side so uh, x-ray x-rays are there and high high sensitivity of the metal metal detectors so these are all you know normal uh, food industrial control so i think uh, um, uh, i have already uh, you are right i have already addressed okay. and, uh, direction okay. is clear Okay, th uh, thanks, Deshu, uh, for uh, providing uh, the insight on the innovation as well as on the technological barrier during the production part. Uh, moving on, I'll move to Shilpa. Uh, Shilpa, how quality and safety is important for making sustainable nutrition? Okay, so I will just begin with sort of um, you know reiterating a few concepts as we know them and how they are undergoing an evolution. So if we look at food safety, it's an age old concept, right? Uh, we know about the food borne illnesses that used to play havoc, been playing havoc since centuries. And uh, even with so much of evolution, even with so many technologies in place, it still hasn't gone down. Food borne illnesses still are a widespread health problem, not just in uh, in the modern world, not in just in the developing countries, but also in developed countries. And they have an impact, a huge impact on the um, economic productivity, right? So the way food is processed, whether it is safe for consumption, whether it will have any adverse impact on the health of consumers is still uh, a big, big, big question mark with so many, uh, you know, new technologies coming in place. Consumers are now getting more and more aware and beyond, they want to move beyond safety. So what people are now looking at is um, what is quality? What is the quality of food that I'm getting? And I will finally come back to how it all impacts the nutritional intake. Now, food quality is a little bit more holistic concept and safety is more of a precursor to that. So your food quality would involve, uh, you know, both the, the negative uh, attributes like spoilage, contamination and adulteration, etc. But it goes beyond that. And when we look at, uh, we call something a good quality in terms of food, we're also the first and foremost that comes to mind is the sensorial attributes. How does the food look like? What is the color, texture, shape, appearance? At times, how does it smell? 
and uh, not to forget the nutritional delivery of that particular food. So how many nutrients does it contain? Is it good for my health? Will consuming a certain food will you know deliver more nutritional benefits than the other? Sort of forms an integral part of the good quality food that we talk about. And governments, regulatory bodies are sort of ensuring they are working hard to ensure that you know the food that the consumers finally get to eat on their table is both safe for consumption and also uh, you know adheres to certain quality uh, limits or quality standards that have been set up depending on the uh, on the market on the country where we operate right so uh, this is food safety and this is one part of it is food uh, quality what does it actually uh, you know culminate into so is the food that i am going to consume only needs to be safe does it only need to be of good quality but ultimately what does it need to deliver and that is where we talk about you know the nutritional delivery the health impact coming in uh, so far we have been uh, fairly limited uh, in the way we think about what food can achieve and that's why uh, you know where we have gone far ahead we have sort of progressed and where we have said that okay food will deliver certain nutritional benefit and beyond that nutritional benefit what is else that can you know come into our diets and that's why evolution of it into supplements can we get some more nutritional delivery from not just food but you know extracted in the form of health supplements extracted in the help of some nutraceuticals herbal supplements and all the science is is evolving it's emerging and that's where the entire food safety food quality and nutritional delivery comes together now when we look at a sustainable nutrition uh, what it means is that it will not just nourish uh, me my family my uh, you know country but sustainability goes beyond that sustainability sort of says that what is it that's going to uh, mean in terms of you know uh, quality of food delivery of diets for generations to come and that's when we are now looking more closely at where does the food come from how is it uh, you know grown how are the various processing or technological uh, you know mechanisms that are in place that will ensure that the food today that i consume is not only healthy enough for me but also for my generations to come will the soils retain their uh, you know uh, the natural nutritional or the mineral content that will you know finally lead to healthy crops you know for our generations to come will the animal um, you know feeds etc or the way we uh, we are um, you know getting into our uh, you know animal processing industries will it also mean that for for years to come will it be able to you know sustain am i causing a negative impact on the environment and therefore uh, the transformation in technologies has to keep in mind the the present scenario not to uh, ignore what is it that finally going forward that is going to be available for our future generations therefore it becomes completely you know very important and very very uh, a pragmatic approach to follow uh, is to ensure that the food that you are delivering today the quality that you are trying to uh, to ensure is sustainable in the longer run and i think this is uh, where we as an industry where all the collective knowledge of various uh, parts of the food industry needs to come together to ensure that safety quality nutrition comes together for you know the betterment of of our consumers today and tomorrow uh thanks shilpa for uh, for 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 providing us some some uh, or throw some light on this uh, quality and safety aspects uh, for the sustainable nutrition yes and the future generation we need to preserve things for our future generation be it nutrition be it anything else uh moving on uh, so i'll move on to vijay vijay uh, i think uh, you your uh, your company and you deal with more of a protein uh, stuffs you know you are, i can call it as in this entire group you are a protein man for us so 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 i would ask you some question on the protein part itself so uh, you know in the last one and a half years three uh, or 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 close to uh, close to one and a half or now i, I think it may happen uh, the entire year may go uh, in this covid situation so how protein as a front line of the battle for consumer health 
how how protein can help build immunity and how uh, you know i mean give us some throw some light on this uh, how protein can become a frontline battle for 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 safeguarding the consumer health in this situation okay so uh, you know thanks for you know kind of uh, we as a company we have brand max protein and we stand for high protein snack from bars to cookies to chips to peanut butter and so on so it's a very you know a, a max protein as a brand we believe in food should be a balanced and uh, you know should have good amount of protein carb and fat along with vitamins and minerals and this whatever i'm saying is nothing new right i mean we all know that food plays the most important role on an individual health and both health as well as the overall immunity and immunity has become a very important uh, you know a thing for last uh, year and a half during the you know covid and the pandemic so we all have started thinking about healthy food and when you say healthy food what does it mean i mean you take any food it's primarily contribu you know it's made of protein carbohydrate and fat as the macro ingredient there is nothing fourth macro ingredient in there really and in vitamins and minerals are micro ingredient so macro ingredient you get from you know all your regular food dal rice chapati sabji whatever really and uh, micro ingredient comes from your uh, vegetable and fruits and vegetable primarily so you know i come with a little different uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you know philosophy is we did not need the supplement the amount of supplement or the you know the medicines that used to be are required today are much much higher than what our grandfathers and the forefathers were i mean 100 year back we did not need those supplements and the reason for this is the food that we used to eat is not the same we're not using the same way that the food we used to eat it used to be for breakfast lunch dinner what we call a square meal that means when you know it's a thali which is you have all different colors of food you have dal sabji roti and those roti also will be the whole grain roti and that has changed in today's hectic life we cannot think of having a square meal so it's a kind of a fast food or a quick uh, you know uh, this uh, you know potato sabji and uh, dry sabji and a roti has become a common thing or a quick pasta or a pav bhaji has become a normal thing so you don't get the balanced meal you don't get the proper nutrition and when you don't get this proper nutrition that's where the nutraceutical come in and in today's meals if you look at the indian meal is very high on carbohydrate okay and very little on protein so it is one cup of dal is normally you have in the whole day or even the non vegetarian if you look at the non veg you know there's a chicken curry it's a one or two piece of a chicken and it's mostly gravy which is a fat and the spices right so we don't get enough protein so it is not that you will have all protein only but the balance of you know there is a 30 30 40 40 percent of calories coming from carbs 30 percent from protein and a 30 percent from fat and that also carb in a more of a fiber form complex carbohydrate so protein among the three all of them use energy right but within this protein energy is considered to be a better energy for immunity sustained energy to make you feel energetic right so if you eat lot of carbohydrate it gives you energy but you feel lazy and lethargic when you eat high protein diet you feel energetic for a longer period of time right 
and this also helps when you are energetic your immunity is higher right even what we call a immunity immunity is also made of immune cells and protein as a building block of a different cell also helps build you immunity so both okay. as a building block of a immunity cell as well as when you feel energetic you tend to have higher immunity okay. and that's how protein plays an extremely important role both as overall individual health as well as overall immunity okay thanks vijay thanks uh, and uh, just to add on one more point on your this thing i've seen most of the young generation uh, uh looking at uh, various forms of protein and i think that is the reason why uh, most of your forms are doing really well, well in the max protein range like bars and all that so thank you uh, for answering this question uh, so i'll move on i think we have very less amount of time we'll have to look at the watches as well uh, uh, so uh, now i would like to have uh, uh, this last uh, or the 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 question uh, which i want uh, first to be answered by bhavna and then uh, i would take uh, shilpa's view as well so this question is on how does one make uh, nutra benefits stand out in today's times first bhavna and then shilpa yeah i think thanks vaiva when i'm uh, also keeping the time check i think um, yeah. just briefly i think before we come down for five that how do we actually manage the situation of making them a little more you know visible or more acceptable or you know increasing the usage like we call penetration stuff like that i think i have to understand the barriers which are going to be there so one of the three probably you know, just from a top line perspective and i'm not going to get into the details are the barriers are going to be like for example the cost because see let's be honest in the room i mean most of them are going to be costly right so having an expectation and i think even when we do our pnl mappings at the back end we know that you know some of them are not going to be purchased every day or consumed every day even if they want they should be you know even for the benefit of the people not only from a selling perspective but they are costly so you know we have, we have to be cognizant of that fact second is about this whole regulatory framework which allows or does not allow us to say certain things which directly impacts the third point which is the understanding of the usage people are still not very clear mere ko kyun khana hai why do i really need to have it if i'm having a glass of milk do i really need a protein powder will it do something extra okay if i'm having an egg do i really need a protein powder if i'm having two oranges you know just from a simplest speaking way do i really need a vitamin c uh, gummy for that matter which can come as a dietary supplement so because all these things impact that so i think keeping those and i'm saying i'm not even getting into that whole import export raw material quality safety because from the front end you know they don't matter much to the consumer these are back end issues we need to identify as an industry i think just the top three things that we need to manage is of course the cost part of it without the compromising uh, element of safety and quality i think which you also mentioned because nothing can exist without quality and safety being the the prime of ac you know lever for it but i think there is definitely a scope of a better regulatory scenario which allows manufacturing and acceptance of a certain you know india made or a local made you know uh, ingredients at a certain level which can be accepted and thereby reducing the overall cost probably i think there is a lot of work that is happening by a lot of subgroups you know for this you know to make certain things acceptable it also goes and impacts the cost which goes into the whole efficacy and the clinicals which are part of it in terms of it and the reputation that needs to be done so the proper modeling needs to be done in terms of management of the cost and the raw material you know because we also import i mean sorry export a lot of stuff outside you know and they need to go through thorough checks of those things so one is the whole cost aspect that needs to be managed within this framework the second is about that you know how do we improve the understanding from the perspective and i think i think lots of studies have actually shown that you know people actually read about at least when it comes to nutraceutical they talk to either to their doctors who read the label or they themselves at least try once to read the label even if they don't understand it so the studies have shown that you know today whatever is written on the label you know people try to understand that and today i think there is also truth that you know a laundry list of nutrients sometimes get accepted more because they just believe you know zyada hai to better hoga they sometimes don't believe a 100% pure element present in one capsule could be required for a certain thing they go by a laundry listing so i think helping them to understand for which i think today online understanding whether it's from selling perspective the information perspective and you know all that needs to actually go up in a significant matter so it impacts the consumption and i think from 
uh, I think the whole point that I'm trying to make here, it is not about increasing the consumption. I think it is just about clarifying their doubts. It is as simple as that. You know, there needs to be just a portal where people have a simple FAQ to say that, why should I have it? And I know people are trying their best to do that. And I think that is required to continue that effort on the things. And I think just the last part of it is very clear communication about the whole benefit part of it in line with the regulation of the organization and the country that we're operating in. I think these are the things which are required to be done at a point where we need to, uh, we can expect some point to be increased. And when I say it, the stakeholders for this industry actually go beyond and above. So there's a dietitian world, there's a doctor's world, there is a whole medical world which is out there and they all need to be talked to at the same time. And I think the future is online. Everything okay. today, thanks, right? Bauna. So this needs to be Thanks, Bauna. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Bauna. Oh, for, uh, for, for, we do have less amount of time. Shilpa, very crisply, you can uh, complete that. Right. So I think uh, Bhavna put it very lucidly and very comprehensively. Uh, what I would just want to probably just highlight here is that, you know, a lot of consumer data is emerging wherein this entire pandemic has sort of been a watershed moment. And which, where people are actually looking back at their diets and trying to figure out what is it that they need to do to eat healthier, right? So from a dietary perspective, people are looking at adding more value to the food they consume. Uh, is it, and they're also, you know, asking the question, is it anything else that I need to do beyond the regular food that I eat? And that's why the, the entire opportunity for, you know, supplements for uh, nutraceuticals comes in, wherein if there is a requirement, if there is a requirement, and I would like to emphasize that, there should be enough uh, you know, uh, options available for consumers to enhance their diets so that, you know, it um, they stay healthier and they are able to sort of, uh, you know, deliver up to their potential. So, therefore, as Bhavna already iterated, uh, it is important to, you know, build awareness, build knowledge, and that can only be done by, uh, you know, the manufacturers that can be done by the the medical fraternity, the dietitians, etc. Wherein we try to build a rational, a logic for why you need to consume certain things, and how is it that you need to consume also. So beyond the why part, the how also needs to be very very strongly emphasized. Right. And uh, that's where I would like to be. Thanks. Okay. Uh, thanks, Shilpa. Uh, I have this last question. Uh, which I wanted a very rapid fire, but I'm not sure whether I have time to go for it. Uh, uh, but anyway, if, if I, I mean, I want a very one line kind of an answer. I don't want a bigger answer to it. Uh, so to all the panelists, very quick as a rapid fire round. Uh, how does, how has COVID changed the way people perceive supplements and how can the Nutra industry take some learnings from here? Single line, everyone. I'll go first and then I'll probably pass it on to Shilpa and then she pass it on to the other person. I think single, answer, single line answer is COVID has definitely put this whole thing back into the forefront. This is both an opportunity and a challenging time for the industri neutra industry to take advantage in a credible way. And I think we should take it full steam ahead with the most credible products coming out and the being with very frank and clear communication strategy will go a long way for us to help. Shilpa, to you. Yeah, so I, what I would want to say is that, you know, they, with the entire Ayurveda taking a forefront here, I think there is a lot of scope and opportunity for us to actually go out and present some clinical data so that the role of these um, ancient wisdom is a lot more uh, pragmatic rather than just being anecdotal and traditional wisdom passed down. So there is a good opportunity there is what I feel. Okay, Vivek. Vivek, your take. Oh, you are on mute. Okay. Okay. Just okay, yeah, yeah. Just want to add. Nowadays, two things I want to add. People are becoming uh, much more health aware. Health awareness has been generated inside the people, and they are searching for the healthy foods, especially for the which can boost up their immunity. Okay, uh, Vijay. Yeah. You know, in my opinion, COVID has changed the thinking of people. A wish for healthy food and a nutraceutical has become a want and it has become a reality. It is good for the consumer awareness and it is uh, people are looking for nutritious health food. And COVID had made that change. Uh, Deshraj. 
uh, 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 I will put it to towards industry, and I I think this uh, pandemic has put a challenge to the industry to, uh, you know, uh, to uh, to build uh, to to uh, uh, to work for maintaining this trust which uh, which consumer has uh, has shown during this pandemic. So we come. Uh, Industry has to work a lot uh, to, you know, uh, sustain it in future. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, all the panelists for uh, for the response and uh, completing the session on time. My take is on COVID. Uh, because of COVID, I think nutraceutical, uh, uh, you know, is absolutely on a spotlight, and the expectations out of out of nutraceutical industry has increased much more than it, it was when in the okay. pre-COVID time. So that's what I, I yeah. take it at from you. So uh, Devanshi, is there any questions here? Can we go open the floor for the questions? Uh, well, we do not have any questions as, as of now for this panel session, but if we receive it, we will be sharing it across with you individually and you can answer it. Okay. 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 So thank you, panelists. Uh, thank you, my esteemed panelists, uh, for uh, giving time and uh, providing uh, real inputs uh, on on this on this very important category uh, or, or, or subject, which is nutraceutical. I, I'm sure this is going to evolve as we move ahead in this uh, and we come out of this time. But this this time has really shown us that you you love it or you hate it. Nutraceutical is here to stay. So, uh, yes. so with that note, uh, thank you all for providing all your inputs and uh, bye till we meet next time. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks Weber, Weber, for uh, you. managing all of us. Thank you so much, Weber, for managing all of us. <laughs> you know, and our thank thoughts you. at the timely Thanks, manner. So pleasure. thank you. Pleasure to pleasure Thanks. to have a panelist like you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, thank everyone. You, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.